Number 58 is in the yellow car, coming around turn number two. And oh, we've got an axe, Viva! It's on the wall, he goes into a terrible slip, and we have a fire. The engine is ripped off the back of the car and comes tumbling across. A.J. Ford was right behind him. He was able to avoid it somehow. But Tom Spiva is in the car. He's moving around. He's trying to get out. An incredible accident on turn number 68, Tom Spiva. There is fire. Spiva can't seem to get out of the car. The fireman is there, spraying it down. Question is, is the fire in the cockpit? But what a spectacular flip. And the fire suit hopefully will protect young Tom Spiva as he struggles to get out of the car. And Jackie, it appears that he is trapped in that car. Yeah, he is, but he's got lots of help there. They're obviously dosing the fire. You can't see the alcohol flame, of course, but he looks as if he's OK. He's certainly moving around. I don't think I've ever seen a driver move so easily after such a terrible accident. That's one of the most horrifying crashes I've ever seen, to have a driver come out of that even moving the way he is. Now look at the replay of the accident. They go into the turn together. As they go into turn one there, you can see they're going even, going into turn two even. As they go through there together, somehow they touch. Now you see Sneaver in the blue car low down, and he actually goes into what I would call a classic open wheel racing car action. It climbs over the front wheel of the yellow car, a Rathmans car. This is the type of accident that can occur. It seems Elder to be Rasmussen. that Tom Sneaver was in the inside line. Rathmussen stayed parallel with him, but look at that car slam against the wall, burst into flame, the car disintegrating as it goes through. The suites there, the people very close to the accident, the wheels are coming off, the engine is ripped off completely. What an accident. It looked to me as if these two cars tried to go through turn two together. I don't think it was Tom Sneaver's fault, but I can't honestly say that it was Rasmussen's fault either. The yellow flag is out, but it looks to me as if it was just a standard motor racing. Accident. He's still leading as they come around. In turn two, we have a report of a problem. Yellow flag is out again. Yellow flag AJ is out Foyt. AJ Foyt it into the Foyt. wall. AJ Foyt. Foyt in turn two went into the wall, then it rode down the wall. Thus far, though, there has been no fire, but AJ is not moving. AJ is not getting out of the car. Fuel leaking down across the track. The fire crews are there. The car is sitting firmly against the wall. The crews are at the machine. A.J. Foyt's number 14. The yellow flag is out again. Race right. The real factor there, though, is Danny Sullivan. They keep getting caught up alongside of 
with him, and they can get good running room. As Tom Steva around Ray Hall and in the first place. Tom Steva picks up the lead once again. Problem on the course over in turn four. A car smacks the wall and smacks it hard. Can, uh, Phil Kruger, this is the third time in the fourth turn, and this time it's serious. Kruger not moving in the cockpit. There's the safety crew, very carefully. No fire, the car badly damaged. Bill Kruger appears, from our point of view, to be unconscious. Now we're going to be careful. We'll wait until we hear what the safety people say. Climbing out, let's take a look. There on the right-hand side, that's the battle that was going on between Mears and Carter for third place. Carter tries it on the inside. Looks like he just lost aerodynamics and touched the back of Rick's car. There's no question about it. Looks like the air just let go. Look at the car totally broken up, and Poncho's in nothing but a capsule with no engine. Now it turns All the way good. over. Woo! Johncock comes by. Frightening accident for Poncho Carter. He was in a terrible accident in a private practice session at Phoenix in 1977. Badly injured his pelvis and legs. The worst day I ever had in racing was in Michigan, 1984. I lost control going into turn three, and I hit the wall at about 215, 217 miles an hour. The car continued to rotate at about 150 miles an hour, trying to throw me out of the car. I'm now strapped to the front with the six points harness, the only thing that's saving my life, completely enveloped in this wreckage. When it came to a standstill, I realized I was in deep trouble here. And then the safety crew showed up. The Buick Corporation, who raced stock block engines at Indy, have put a lot of faith in Jim Crawford. He is their test driver. He only has one race on his schedule this year. But there was yet another big shunt. That was 1989. But this time, there weren't the leg-breaking injuries. The cars were getting stronger. But Crawford knows what it's like to hit the wall. He was bruised, he was battered, but at least he was fit to race another year. A crash coming out of turn four. The car has gone into the pit area. I believe it hit the abutment separating the track and the pit road. It is well out of my view. The car went into the pit area and is stopped there right now. Evan Kogan spins in turn four and hits the pit road attenuator. Miraculously, Kogan escapes the horrific crash without a scratch. He laps to go the race's most serious crash. John Jones and Phil Kruger collide in turn two, and our hopes of an injury-free race were dashed. Jones is able to free himself and walk away from his car unhurt. Kruger is pinned in his car. The right front tire and suspension are mashed back into the cockpit, and Phil is unconscious and suffering from internal injuries. The Horton safety team and cart doctors worked for several minutes to stabilize Phil. Their expertise probably saved his life. Kruger was airlifted to St. Joseph Mercy Hospital in Ann Arbor, where he was admitted in critical condition. Mark Dismore was going flat out when his car clipped to war as he prepared for the start of time trials for the race. The slow motion replay shows just how lucky Dismore is to be alive as his car speared across the track and straight into a wall. On impact, the Penske Buick's fuel tank burst into flames. The car ricocheted into another concrete barrier and then virtually disintegrated. Dismore was taken to hospital with injuries to his feet, arms and legs and a fractured neck. Amazingly, he's said to be in a stable condition. Until the second turn, veteran Stan Fox hits the rumble strip and shoots into the wall, causing an enormous six-car crash. We'll examine one of the replays. If you are sensitive, please look away for the following few moments. And his car shears in half. Fox's legs are completely exposed, and they are what hits first as he crashes into the wall. He was unconscious by the time medics got to him, suffering from severe head injuries and, of course, leg injuries. We'll update his condition later. Probably luckily for him, I did miss him. Get home, get the wall. That looks like uh, Mark Lundell. I hit at 198 miles an hour. We had 122 G impact. The car does everything it's designed to do. The engine breaks away from the monocoque. The front of the monocoque is damaged, but that sort of broke my impact. That disintegration is good. 
That's energy leaving the car. My seat belts were five inches longer than what they were manufactured. So that tells you that my body went forward in such a way they stretch five inches. The monocoque of that race car was two inches narrower than what it was manufactured. Buddy Lazier takes the checkered flag and wins the Indianapolis 500. Firestone's first win since 1971. And, and a crash on the finish. Big crash on the finish of the race. Salazar looks like Sam Pedri and Guerrero. The cars that were running fourth, fifth, and sixth all crashed together at the end of the race. He was crossing the finish line, taking the checkered. Roberto Guerrero lost control. Spins there and he gets up into the Look at Sam Pedri. Whoa, I've never seen that red car get up like that. Into the fence, he's upside down still right there. Now he hits Salazar, he's still upside down, and it flips him back over. Unbelievable, unbelievable accident right there. Another look at it. Here comes Guerrero, oh, he, just, he loses it. He just loses it. Whoa. Whoa! Up so high over the top of the camera. And those two guys were, look at that. The force and that just took those unbelievable accidents. Now that hit on the fence by Zampedri flipping upside down was unbelievable. This is from Salazar's car. Roberto loses it down to the left. Comes across. Look at that. Salazar oh. literally goes under it. Look at him duck. Did you see Unbelievable. Him duck? He ducked his head. Drives under it and then is hit from behind. But that hit puts him right side up. So that much has been decided. But there are several championships still to come. And certainly the... Oh, we have a huge wreck. Oh, I think that's Parker Johnstone. Parker Johnstone. I don't know what happened. That well, is, in he fact, is Parker Johnstone. That car, I, I, two cars upside. I don't know what's going on. Two cars upside down in a day. We understand there may have been contact with Scott Pruitt. Let's see if we can take another look at what happened. As Allenzer Jr. continues on his way, this is on the rundown to no. Turn that's one. Paul Tracy. That's Paul Tracy down the inside. Paul clips him right there at the back. Taps him. They're trying to get through. Sides, slides it sideways. Looked pretty harmless. Whoa! And just dug in in the grass. Just must have been enough of a lift there to catch. I remember him. every part of it um, because it, you know, it, it didn't hurt. It wasn't a bad accident physically. So, yeah, it all started actually in the in the keyhole where where Zanardi ran into P.J. Jones and bent his wing. And so I was coming up to pass P.J. Jones through the kink and I had him pass and I was going and he couldn't turn the steering wheel because in the kink he couldn't turn and he ran straight into my uh, right rear with his left front and that's what put me, spun me into the inside wall and just uh, went for a wild ride. I just remember seeing green, blue, green, blue, green, blue, green, blue and uh, the whole time I was hoping please don't run into anything and hit anything. and. Uh, Luckily, I ended up in the kitty litter at the end and uh, was able to walk away. Seen some worrying incidents this weekend at Laguna Seca. Let's take you back to what happened here on Friday afternoon in first qualifying. Looking at Patrick Carpentier, he went off at turn number four. The car hit the gravel track backwards, took off slightly, hit the tires, and look at this. It vaulted clean over that catch fencing. An amazing accident. And fortunately, let me tell you, Patrick Carpentier was okay. Now, it caused a lot of anxiety amongst the drivers. They asked for some changes to be made to the gravel traps around the course. Cart responded to that, and we're all set to go racing here this afternoon. One driver looking to uh, improve his ride is Buddy Lazier. We've got a crash. Let's oh, go upstairs. A big crash. Terrible crash. Out of turn number four. And here on the main straight, it involves many, many cars. I can see as many as seven or eight cars involved in this accident. Two cars just got together. There were two wide. Looked like two cars got oh. together. Couldn't tell whether it was... That's Buell hitting the wall right there right. very hard. The mirror, it looked like mirrors got together with somebody there and, and started that. Everybody else kind of in, in the back trying to run through the debris and just running into each other. 
That's Corey Witherill there in the middle of things, too. You can see she's well behind this thing. She has a good chance to miss it, but there's a lot of debris up there. That, I think that's what really got to her. She ran over a lot of debris, oh, boy, and that's what really messed her up. Uh, that bent some of the suspension pieces just running over the debris from the other part of the crash. Wow, there was so much debris on the track. But, you know, the reason they do that, as I'm sure you can back up, Larry, is, is to dissipate the energy from the crash. They have these parts fly off the cars very easily to dissipate that impact. Well, it certainly helps the drivers because it does uh, absorb a lot of that energy when they hit the wall. But it certainly makes it difficult on uh, the drivers behind trying to miss all that stuff. Wow, here it is from another angle. Just a tremendous amount of fire there, initially. Yeah, and that's Corey Witherall right there who gets Oof. nailed a couple of times in that bright orange car. And it looks like the J Dr. Jack Miller might have been involved in the accident also. Yeah, there's uh, that car that's coming farthest down the racetrack. Uh, doesn't look like there's many wheels left on that one. And here we go again. Now that's Corey Witherill, that green car. He's on the outside. It looks yeah. like the red car comes down a little bit. The car, those two cars came together when the red car came down. And I can't, that looks like Giafoni, uh, who came down a little bit. The car behind him had to check up. And when he did, he made contact with the car on the inside of him, which I believe was Casey Mears. Dr. Jack Miller was involved in the incident. Leader when it comes to setting up these cars, and they obviously have a good setup this evening. This coming Wednesday night at Eldora Speedway, owned of course by Tony Stewart. We'll get to that later as we have Simona Di Silvestro against the Safer Barrier. A lot of flash and flame coming out of there. And those flames are usually caused by oil but look at how much is up on the right yeah, front it, oh there. yeah this is uh that's not good a little more serious than an oil fire i'm afraid let's get, uh, get the fire wow jeez we gotta get her out of there but quick come on come on having a little bit of difficulty doing so Go get let's, her out, let's get her get, out. Let's get the flames uh, retarded here, shall we? Man. There's an extinguisher bottle. Come on, get it on there. Having just all kinds of difficulty getting her out of the race car. You need to get the head restraint out, and they were trying to do so, but it was binding, and it, it is very difficult to get out of these cars. Obviously, the team is livid. Yeah. Mm. But, but there she is. She's out. So that's great.
track racing, and it's fun. It's way yellow, back. Yellow. No start. Way too early. There's a restart zone that's labeled on the outside. Oh, oh, huge crash in the back. Renis VK. It looks like Colton Herta are involved. That car flew. A lucky escape for Colton Herta. There wow. he is. Yeah, the guys in the back thought the green was still out, still charging towards the start finish line as it was waved off and a huge impact. Very lucky. Fine. Yeah, that's, yes, you can hear him say fine on the radio. So, so good to hear that. The Dutch teenager, Renus VK, the rookie for Ed Carpenter Racing. He was involved. Colton Herter was involved. Scott Dixon was somewhere in there as well. I think he was late to arrive on the scene and kind of worked his way through. And there he is stepping from the capstone Honda. Big damage to the car. Every corner on that, on that car is bent. The pace car driven by Earl Servia taking the field through pit lane to avoid all the carnage on the front straight to give the AMR safety team enough room to attend to both these cars, both these drivers. Again, everybody looks, looks to be all right for, uh, man, that was a very, very scary accident. But Paul, that kind of thing is so easy to happen when you have a waved off a waved off start. Guys, check up, and if everyone's not on the same page, just we'll see, see the now. back. These guys are all nose to tail. You can't really see the flagger, and he just gets into the back tire and drives right over the top of that car. And another example of the, how the safety goodness. screen is Really, I believe just saved Renus VK's life with that. And and the fact that Colton hurt us, oh, this is this is good on the onboard. Simon slows up. Renus, oh, it all just happens so no start. fast. No start. You have almost no time to react in that situation. You're trying to be as close to the car in front of you on a restart as possible to try to get that draft, try to maximize. Well, Renus VK got a little loose there. It stepped out and he had to check up, and Colton was on a run right there, so. It was kind of a little bit of two things going on at once. A yellow, he got a little bit loose right there. And have, having that uh, that safer barrier sit a few feet off the fence, this really saved Colton Herta from an even oh. scarier ride. Had that gearbox gotten into the fence and started spinning that car, that would have been a much, much more violent impact for Colton Herta. Scary stuff, but again, testament to all the safety that IndyCar has put into these tracks, into these cars. I mean, that's twice already tonight, Paul, that we've seen the aero screen do something. Let's go, Takuma Sato is not too far behind, and Alexander Rossi as well. Oh, oh look at the look, he is a spinner. Connor Daly, like Daly. Daly. Connor Daly spins, and oh, oh big hard hit, hit for yeah. I think Oliver Askew. Oliver Askew oh. lost it in the smoke, and that was a massive hit. That was nasty. So it was panic in the back when Connor Daly lit it up and lost it, and then you can't, I would imagine, Townsend, that the smoke, he probably couldn't see. Well, but he, he was, I mean, he was so fast onto the scene. I, I'm not sure if Connor Daly was hit or what happened as the AMR team quick to tend to ask you get the fire out on the right rear. That was a big hit. Wow. That was a vicious angle, too, that he came darting off of turn four. He dotted across. So here we go. Connor just yeah. loses it on the power. He's down way low. Lots of smoke. He's got the throttle wide open. And in the back here, I don't really know what, I don't know if he got touched, but bang, oh. side slap, pancake the wall. Thank goodness Super for hard. the safer barrier. Thank oh. goodness for the safer barrier. I wonder if I Connor don't know if he got, got his turned. left front onto that apron uh, that caught out Alonzo in practice. Yeah, I think it might, Townsend it was, maybe just trying to get squared up to get a run. And on that concrete, we got a great view right here if he touched that concrete. Yeah, he's on the concrete. <laughs> yep. So on the concrete, it jacks weight in the car, and you're full power, and he loses it, and keeps the throttle buried. But it'll be interesting to see if we can get an angle if Askew got turned by somebody because of the way the trajectory was where he went towards the inside. The view from Zach Veach and the game bridge on board. There goes Connor. Beach to the high, high side, but we still don't up, really see up, what happened with Askew. Askew is fast arriving on the scene behind Elio Castro Neves and Simon Pagano. Look down to the bottom left. He just uh, took he a just, of action. Yeah, he just, just got caught in the smoke and didn't know where the car was. He couldn't see it. I couldn't see it even with the camera, the high angle, and he just was trying to avoid it. And uh, just had a big oversteer moment there.
so confronting. But again, Oliver Askew is out of his car, so too Connor Daly. Bottom left is where you'll see Askew take evasive action. One of one of the things that can happen on these restarts that you don't see so easily is that sometimes you can check up and if the car's a little light anyway, you're already not at speed with the right downforce. So all of a sudden the car gets even lighter as you lift and, uh, and bad things happen. We had an onboard with Oliver Askew and hopefully caught the moment to try to get a better read of what happened. Here we go. You're all clear. on the brakes, Paul. Yeah, he just couldn't, you couldn't see Connor's car and he's, everybody was checking up in front of him. It was option A was to run into the back of the cars in front of him or avoid and it just hooked on him. On the talented brakes. youngster ends his race in spectacular style and replays not already, already way loose, loses it, brushes the wall, not super hard and then it just hooks itself and that's the worst case scenario oh. right there. He's going over 100 miles an hour and comes to effectively a, a, a full stop. Listen here. Oh. And that is why we have this new safer screen because I really believe, Townsend, that that just saved his life. Those tires, back up, back up, back up the bottom. if those You're tires tired. would have You're come tired. over the top of the car and hit him in the head, yeah. who knows what would have happened. So he gets to see the target and then he knows that he's in for a wallop of a hit.